Hi. Wonderful. I'm so glad to be here tonight because tonight we're going to be talking about being an empath. And being an empath is amazing. And I'm going to explain all about what it is and why it's such an incredible gift. But let's wait till a few more people have joined us. I see you, Claire and Vicky. Hi there. Great to have you guys here. This is perfect topic for you two. Perfect topic for lots of people. I'm excited to talk about it because I see a lot of talk about being an empath at the moment out on websites and books and various things and I've got a few things to say about it. Hi Liz, hi Anna, hi Jamie, and Louise. Mm. Fabulous. And remember, remember, remember questions. I would love to engage in any discussions about being an empath, about being empathic, being a highly sensitive person, uh, whatever it is that the questions are coming up for you, whatever it is that's drawn you to this webinar tonight, then let me know and let's see where our discussion can go. That's one of the reasons I'm totally loving these Facebook lives because it gives us a chance to really uh, take them wherever you want to go with them, which gives me great impetus to chat and share some understandings. Hmm. All right. Hi, Charlotte and Rob. Hi, Ingrid, Martha, Ewan and Anne. Wonderful. Excellent. Well, I'm sure there will be many others that join us, but I think let's get started because um, I know that there's a lot of a lot to say tonight um, and also totally trust that there'll be a lot of great questions about it as well. So I want to give those some good times. So being an empath, what does that even mean? What is an empath? I'm going to define it as someone who perceives situations, events, people around them, and experiences those people, situations, events, as if it's all happening to them. So there's no division in, in a really empathic energy system. There's often no division between the individual and the situation they're in. So really their energy systems are experiencing the emotions of another person or the emotions of 50 people. If they're in a room with 50 people, they're experiencing the energy that has occurred in the room or in the forest or in the field that they're now in. So everywhere has its own energy and often has an energetic imprint of what has occurred there. So for example, if you're an empath and you visit a site that perhaps has been the site of a battle or um, a burial ground, then you will feel the imprint of that energy. Um, which, if you know how to manage that, if you know the immense gift that that is, is a beautiful way for your personal healing and for the cosmic healing. If you don't know those things, then often it's simply overwhelming. I would say, imagine being in a room with 50 people and experiencing all of that energy. But I suspect if you're here on this Facebook Live, it's because that's exactly what you do. You can pick up other people's energy, the energy of events, situations, rooms. You are super sensitive to perceiving and experiencing that's the key some people are very very good at perceiving energy perceiving emotions perceiving the energetic imprint of a place or understanding what their friend is going through but if you're an empath it's different because not only do you perceive it but you experience it and often you experience it through your body which makes it even more intense so Let's start there. Susan, Alexandra, 
Ingrid, you're asking what are the best practices for helping our system manage the intensity that comes in with overwhelm um, when being an empath? Absolutely, and we're going to get to that, Ingrid. Uh, Katie, Liz, how do we stop ourselves as healers from taking other people's symptoms on? Absolutely, I knew that this is a good topic to be working with, and we're going to get to those questions. Because right now, there's a big consciousness shift happening in our human community and a lot of it's to do with the earth energy that's occurring at this time as well as the cosmic energy and with everything that's happening actually what it's doing is creating more and more empaths more and more people who are highly sensitive to the environment around them which in a way is brilliant it's absolutely brilliant. It's heading us all in the direction that we need to be heading to heal the planet that we're living on, to heal our ecosystem, to heal ourselves. We're lifting in consciousness, in awareness and in connectivity. And that's key because when our energy systems expand into more connectivity, that's currently what we're defining as being an empath. So it's all good. It's all in wisdom. It's all in the great scheme of healing each other. Beautiful. But as you are stating in some of these questions, it also can be very, very overwhelming. But the great news is that there's a lot that we can do to help work with your energy system. So you remain empathic you remain an empath but no longer is it over stimulating no longer is it overwhelming uh, especially Liz you're asking here how do we stop ourselves as healers from taking on other people's symptoms please so for those of you who work within the healing field you would have directly experienced um, the big push in greater connectivity and many of you will be really experiencing that place of um, your clients symptoms maybe you wake up and you've got a sore hip and the first person that walks through your clinic that morning is someone who has a bad hip so obviously that kind of um, experiencing is not particularly healthy for your system especially as you begin to wonder and worry about it take it on as a personal story and at that point now it's a whole different thing than simply recognizing that it's somebody else's energy so let's have a look i want to come back ingrid what are the best practices for helping our system manage the intensity that come in and overwhelm when being an empath I'm sure grounding is a big part of it. Grounding is a massive part. And, you know, if we go back a few Facebook lives, I really talked about grounding a lot there because grounding is the foundation for the cohesion and organization of your energy system. And without cohesion and organization, then actually it's like pieces of a puzzle once you've got all of your pieces down you've got a beautiful picture there and it's glorious and it's the um, result of time and effort that you've put in when you've got jigsaw pieces missing in that puzzle then there's gaps and into those gaps come other people's energy come energy of places yeah so keeping your system cohesive keeping it organized is a first and that starts with grounding because if you're not bringing energy in through your head through your feet if you're not letting energy go out through your head through your feet then actually your system is going to begin to lack some of its cohesion some of its organization so if you're new to this work then please do go my website pruneharris.com go and read more about grounding there's 250 exercises on my youtube channel and a lot of them work with grounding so that has to be your starting place because what we're looking at for you to be empathic for you to be an empath and to revel in it to experience the joy of it then what's necessary is a super wise aura and you cannot have a wise aura unless you're grounded your strength your cohesion your dynamism of your aura all 
comes from your electromagnetic energy. If your cells aren't active in their groundedness, if those little batteries of each of your cells aren't working as they should do, then your ability to create an aura, a biofield from within you, all around you, will be compromised. And that's why, Ingrid, you're absolutely right. Grounding is the first place because of its effect on the aura. I'm going to go to some more questions because I'm sure I'm going to get the opportunity to expand on the aura. Liz, the same answer to your question. How do we stop ourselves as healers from taking on other people's symptoms, please? Aura, aura, and more aura. So let's, let's have a little look at that. Actually, we're going to do an exercise right now. We're going to start off with an exercise because it's a simple one. But as far as helping your aura, your biofield, so maybe let me just back up and talk a little bit about it. You are an electromagnetic being. Your energy fields are energized, powered up by the electromagnetic energy that you bring in to your body. And you bring them in in very specific ways. One is the bottom of your body, which means your feet, the bottom of your aura. You pull up energy into your energy system, into your bio system from the earth. And the earth is exquisitely designed to help us living on it. So we're able to suck in these amazing electrons from the earth and we need them. We need them for our functioning, for our health, for our groundedness. That's one place that we pull in energy. The other place is we pull in energy from above our head. And it's slightly different from the deep electrons that the earth provides us, but is equally as essential for keeping that flow of energy moving through your body. You imagine that you're bringing in beautiful energy from the earth, but you are thinking so much, you're stressing so much up here that all of this is a congested mass, yeah? At that point, your ability to be grounded is going to be greatly compromised because you're no longer that beautiful energetic flow that you are in your fullest energetic cohesion. Yeah. The other place that we bring energy in is through our aura. When we have a healthy, vibrant biofield, then it attracts good energy to you. Life-giving energy, beneficial energy for your growth and for your development. So those are the three key places that we really absorb energy in our, in our whole body system. And actually, let me have a cup of Never waste a good hot cup of tea. When you need to be able to perceive other people's energy, to perceive the energy of the room, anything that's going on around. You want to do that because you want to be connected. You want to be able to be compassionate and connected with any situation you're in. Many reasons for that. One, you'll be happy, you'll be joyous, you'll be stress-free, you'll be able to feel safe in all situations, and that's a big yay. So, when you're able to be an empath and experience all of that, you have to be able to do so in safety. That's, that's the key part here. And your aura, this amazing biofield that comes from deep inside your body and literally emanates out and around you, that biofield is your big protector. Your biofield has two, and if I'm using the word biofield or aura, they're interchangeable, yeah? They're simply the energy field that isn't physical, that is created from your physicality. Sometimes we use the word an aura is kind of like a spacesuit. Actually, that doesn't work for me because a spacesuit is something we put on. And it gives us the idea that the aura isn't necessarily emanating from within, but it is. If your physical vitality is low, then your auric potency is low. So keeping your physical vitality as nourished and rejuvenated as possible is a really big start to enjoying being an empath. 
And of course, there's an irony there, because if you're continually overwhelmed by experiences that you're in, then actually keeping your physicality really nourished is challenging. So the aura is where it all begins. So let's do that exercise and then I'm going to look at more questions. All right, let's just start by relaxing for a moment, taking a good breath in and breathing out. Be conscious of your grounding. Maybe even rate it. If you were to think of roots coming from a tree or your beautiful deep rooted energy, just take your mind to a time when you have been the most rooted, the most stable, the most physically and emotionally grounded that you have ever experienced. Just remember that for a moment. Help remind your energy field of that time. And you're gonna maybe give that a, a rating, give it a scale. Say that that is your 100% groundedness. It might not be true, you might be able to get deeper, but for right now, think of the most grounded you've ever been and give that 100%. And now check in with your own groundedness. Does it feel as deep as that time that was the most deep ever? Does it feel less? Does it feel like maybe if you had little roots and actually they're just touching the earth, they're not really going in. Does it feel like your roots are pulled right up to your knees or your belly? Just tune into that. See if you can give yourself a rating, a score, a percentage, whatever works for you in your groundedness right now. And take a few breaths, just visualizing, imagining, thinking about energy coming up from the ground beneath you, through your feet, through your legs, into your abdomen, filling your chest, Moving up through your throat, your head, out through the crown of your head, and then flowing like a fountain back down through your biofield, through your aura, all the way back down, encircling your beautiful body until it meets the earth again and drops deep, deep, deep back into the earth. And you can find a way of working with your breath. So as you breathe in, you imagine, visualize, think, draw that energy all the way from beneath you, through your body to above your head. And as you breathe out, allow it to permeate every part of your aura, all the way back down to the ground and beneath. Let's take one more full breath here. And when you're ready then, bringing your awareness back. Now that's a beautiful exercise for groundedness, but it does far more than that. Because when you work with that fountain breath, when you work with pulling energy up and then through the biofield, you're revitalizing your physicality and the biofield. And your aura is designed to be an incredibly wise and aware system all around you. So it will act as a buffer and stop energy coming through and permeating your body, your consciousness, your energy fields, if it's not of benefit to you. It will also take information from within your aura, your biofield, and communicate that to all of the places that are necessary so that you can pick up information 
from your energy field into your subconscious and process it in the consciousness. So you become aware of things in your energy field. And Liz, that's kind of coming back to your question, because when you are aware that something that's happening in you is a symptom of your client, when you're aware of that, you can immediately release it. And I really mean immediately. The minute your energy system can say, hey, I've got a sore hip, but it's not mine. Your energy system is able to release that. And that's a really, really powerful way of working if you work with um, clients or even in, as an empath, you'll be working with energy all the time. So if you can be in a room of people, have your aura really, really strong so that actually you're aware that there's lots of energies, lots of systems, lots of emotions all around you, but you're able to hold your own energy sphere, then actually, the emotions that you maybe do become aware of of other people's can immediately stay outside your sphere, outside. You can imagine the edge of your aura as having this amazing buffer there. And as an empath, often what I see when I see people who are very empathic, the edge of their aura is really, um, well, let's say wonderfully dispersed. <laughs> By that, I mean they're merging with everyone and everything. And one of the big, big importances of being an empath is to keep the edge of the aura really strong. All right, let's see if there's more questions. Hi, Celia and Susan. Yeah. So Susan, you ask about, curious about reversing the effects of being an empath so you can move forward again with newfound strategies. Absolutely. Um, let me think about that one for a sec. Pretty much comes back to what I first talked about, getting your energy system cohesive again. Um, and it's a really important place to kind of get your system working in its flow getting your aura strong. So grounding and aura, I'm going to keep coming back to both of them. And okay, we've only got 30 minutes this evening. So there's going to be, there is already much, much more information on both grounding and aura on my blogs, so pruneharris.com blogs, that'll give you much more. And especially about the auric membrane, because for empaths, that's really important. Okay. Jamie, you're saying that you have often been in a TA at EM events of over 100 people and you experience random symptoms, although I worked very hard to clear my aura in Celtic weave. Exactly. So your energy needs to be cohesive going into a room of people needs especially i mean when you're taing at an energy medicine event then obviously there's massive movements ongoing all the time um water for most people water is very very important yes water to drink and keep hydrated if you're not hydrated what i was talking about as far as that vitality of your cells empowering a strong aura if you're dehydrated or even not really well hydrated yeah and there's a difference rate your hydration. I'm a big one for rating. It gives me an instant insight into where my energy system is. Because I could think to myself, oh yeah, like I've had enough water today. But if I actually check in and say, how hydrated am I? Then, then I've got a sliding scale. And I might say, well, I've drunk quite a lot of bit of water, but actually, I don't feel very hydrated at all. I'm right down there at 20%, which lets me know that if my hydration level is down, then the conductivity of my electrical system is down. Okay, I'm a little bit of a leap there, but you know that you would never have a bath with your radio plugged in in the bathroom near the bath because if it fell in, you're in serious trouble because water conducts electricity. So it's exactly the same in your body, of course. Your water conducts electricity. For you to be that beautiful, grounded, vibrant and vital energy system, and therefore person, you have to have enough fluid in your system to be conducting 
that electricity. So being really well hydrated, whatever experience you're going into, especially if it's going to be a big one. You know, for me, if I go to things like a concert, amazing. I love it. I love live music. I love being in a crowd of thousands of people and I'm highly empathic and I totally love, love that. But there's a few things I'm going to do before I go in and, bef and after I come out. One of them is make sure I'm really hydrated and that my aura and my groundedness is good. Then I'm going to let the music really make it even better. But often when I come away from um, teaching to groups of people or being at somewhere like a concert, the first thing I'm going to do is get in water. That might be a shower, that might be a bath, because that will immediately help strip off any energy that isn't yours. And that's really key. Um, there's even times when I teach to a lot of people and I'll go and have a shower in lunchtime, just literally to clear my aura again when I've been consciously working and processing a lot of energy in my system. So for those of you who are often in large groups or know that certain situations can really overwhelm you, then really, really respect and use water. Let's have a look. Julie, I pick up all energies and it can be difficult to go places and do things. My hus husband doesn't understand why he he can't just be in a bad mood without it impacting me negatively. And Julie, I'm really glad that you brought that up. Yes, we have to love the people in our lives. When we are empaths, then it's a big, big learning curve. You know, they probably didn't sign up when they signed up for a relationship with you to sign up to being with an incredibly sensitive person that is going to potentially be reacting to emotions and energies out of the band of normal, whatever normal is. As I said earlier, normal is changing, but it does take a lot of understanding and education. So absolutely, that place of being able to hold your energy field when people around you are in a bad mood, um, overwhelmed, upset, whatever it is, that's definitely key when you are an empath. Hmm, Katie, great question. How do sacred oils or herbs keep our auras clear, such as smudging with sage or palo santo? Um, well, they act in kind of similar ways to what I was just talking about, the water, in that when we consciously work with an oil, water, um, a smudge of some kind, when we sing through the aura, all of these things are ways of shifting the vibration that we may be holding of other people or energies inside ourselves that need shifting, shifting that vibration through using another vibration, yeah? So the beautiful medicine of something like sage can come in and just clear and shift our own vibration. If you sing or um, use a tuning fork or a singing bowl. There's so many, many different ways that you can work to help restore balance to your groundedness and your aura. Excellent. Katie, I always feel self-conscious when I shake the energy off my hands when I work on clients. I worry about their opinion. Silly, but is there a way to clear as I go this more subtle? Well, for some of you who do work with your hands, especially in the healing field, so working with clients, then your hands are so electromagnetic that actually you will be picking up a lot of other people's energy there, which is great. And many of you will have been taught to shake your hands off. Um, sometimes simply using the analogy of water again. So using a visualization, a metaphor as you're working, taking a moment to have a breath, releasing your arms so your hands are pointing down to the ground and just visualizing any energy that isn't serving you or that doesn't belong to you to simply smooth off and drop into the earth to be transmuted into something beneficial at that point. Our consciousness transcends everything else in an energy field, everything else. So when you can bring your conscious awareness to something that isn't working for you as a pattern here, such as shaking off your hands, then actually you can transcend that. You can shift that 
simply by bringing in a method that holds your consciousness. All right. Vicky, what if you pick up a heaviness from ancestral relations? How can that be transformed most effectively? So Vicky, that is a big, big, big question to come in at the end of our time here. But let's have a, it's a good one. You know what, Vicky, I'm actually going to say hold it because come November time, I'm going to be doing some Facebook lives about ancestral healing. And I think with your permission, I'm going to hold that till then because it's going to be more relative to that place. Okay. Let's have a little look. Just reading through some of these questions to see if there's... Uh, Ingrid, you're asking, what is your favorite exercise to help my energy system come into cohesion? You know what? That is going to depend. <laughs> and this is, you're not gonna like this answer, but it's going to depend on where your energy system falls out of cohesion. Does that make sense? So it's gonna be different for many of you. Um, for me, one of the ways that um, will immediately bring myself back, let's do it, let's end on this. But essentially, what you need to do is find which exercise, which energy exercise, which consciousness exercise feels like it always puts you back together. Some of you might be very skilled with energy exercises. Some of you might be completely new to them. Go to my YouTube channel, there are over 250. Play around, just choose a couple each day and try them. And if one of them just makes you feel like, oh, I've come home to myself, that's what I really needed, then that's the one that's gonna make your energy system be most cohesive, yeah? Because that coming home to yourself is simply you coming back into your energetic cohesion. So I'm gonna show you what that exercise is for me because it immediately just brings everything back into my center. So we're gonna do it, let's cross over. Cross over the hands and just place them really gently. Mostly the weight is on the heels of my hands just resting on the top of my chest. My arms are crossed over my chest. My hands are just really lovingly and gently touching the throat. If you don't like touching the throat, then come up and put your fingers either side of your uh, mouth on your jaw instead. For me, I love it. It's nourishing, it's reassuring. It brings that massive throat chakra back into balance. And again, breathe. You could do that same fountain breath that I was talking of before. And what it does to my energy system is that any places that might have started moving away from the core through stress, through tiredness, through being impacted by other energy, anything like that, immediately starts dropping away as my energy center finds its connection back to my energetic core, especially the heart, the throat. When those two are in play with each other, when they're in alignment, then actually the flow of energy through your core is much more likely and much more effective. Okay, well I knew this was gonna be a whirlwind one. I know there are so many questions I haven't even got to look at here. What I will do is um, choose a couple of them and put them out in my next newsletter on Monday. Um, so yes, I will get to at least a couple more of them. And I'm teaching a course on enhancing your intuition and your empathic abilities, how to be connected and protected in San Diego, which will be live streamed at the beginning of September. So if this has spoken to you, you can always go on my website and have a look there. All right, fabulous. I will very much look forward to speaking to you and being with you again soon. Bye-bye.